Hello YouTube, welcome back to the Web Gear Review. I'm your host, the Web Gear Guy, and today I would like to take a look at the Tropical Rucksack. First of all, the Tropical Rucksack um, came out in around 1968, but let's look at the federal stock number. The federal stock number is 8465935 now, it all started around 1963 when uh, the Nick Laboratories decided to make a backpack for the Arvin troops. And they made a small cotton backpack with a X steel frame. In fact, keep your eye out. The video on that pack is coming here very quickly. Okay. But anyway, it all started when they made that pack for the Arvin Forces. Now, the Arvin Forces uh, are uh, stands for uh, the Army of the Republic of Vietnam Forces is what Arvin stands for. But anyway, they had made that cotton pack for the Arvin troops, and it was well received by the Arvin troops, but it was also well received by the American infantry troops who could get their hands on them. Uh, you know, sometimes they would swap around, trade, beg, borrow, steal, and uh, they would get their hands on one. And the troops who did get their hands on one liked that pack. So after that there, uh, the the uh, military decided to make one for the American troops, a bigger model of it. And so what they did was in uh, about 1965, they uh, requested some examples, three examples to be made, but all out of nylon and based on that Arvin pack, but uh, made out of nylon instead, because you know at the time they were doing the M1967 gear, okay, and uh, so they were switching over to nylon, okay, so what they did was they made actually four of them, they brought them over and they were well received and everything, and the troops really liked the packs pretty good, uh, so what they did was at that time, in 21st of June 1966, they actually ordered 500 of these packs to be sent to Vietnam and uh, to be uh, tested. And they were well received and they liked the testing. So on March 4th, uh, 1968, they were standardized. And then there were some delays there in between, but uh, it was on about, uh, let's see here, uh, April 8th, 1968, a procurement was made for 204,650 of these here packs that you see right here, okay? So uh, the tropical rucksack, the thing about this pack is it's personally one of my favorite packs of the Vietnam War era, okay? Uh, it looks similar to an Alice pack, and later on, I will do a comparison on a video. It just takes a little time to get these videos done. But anyway, this pack here will hold three times of what the lightweight rucksack will. Of course, I understand that you can tie stuff to the frame of the lightweight rucksack, but notice there's not as many things on here to snag vegetation as with that uh, bulky frame and stuff of the... Uh, the lightweight rucksack. But anyway, this thing here has these pockets. These pockets here are about nine inches tall, I believe, and uh, they're about five inches in diameter. Now, one thing about these pockets I want you to notice is they have the exact same plastic snaps that the M1967 gear has with the canteen uh, cover and with the... Uh, the uh, first aid pouch, compass pouch, okay? So notice that right off the bat. It uh, also, he's got an ERDL jacket in there, but these pockets were very roomy, okay? Now, another thing about these pockets, they were not sewn tight. They were sewn where you could shove stuff in behind these pockets and come out the bottom. In fact, you'll see all kinds of uh, 
pictures with uh, troops carrying their machetes there. Uh, they'd attach their machete up here in this uh, M1910 or M1956 type, and they would run it down and threw out the bottom, okay? Now, another thing, like I said, these pockets are very roomy, okay? Let's throw another ERDL out there. Let's take another one out, same thing. Throw it out, okay? Now, I wanna show you something. Each one of these pockets had a very generous drain hole. The bottom of the rucksack had a very generous uh, drain hole. Notice that these two loops are on the bottom. You could lash on more items down through here. With, you could lash on a, a sleeping gear. I mean, you could lash on whatever you had to lash on there. Notice on the sides, they also have the same two lashing points. So you could actually fit something here and lash it on to these uh, nylon uh, uh, little uh, grooves there, loops, I guess you might say. They're pretty wide for loops. But anyway, notice on this side of the pack, it had a, a place to put M1956 style keepers or M1910 hangers. Same thing up here, okay? It also had that on the other side, okay, here and here. Now, let's undo the buckles here. Just give me a second. Bear with me. Now, the buckles on this pack here, some gubo cut them off. I have two here to repair it, but I just have never made the repair. So uh, that's, that's a bad deal, but it's still a nice example, okay? So notice up here, there is a map pocket on top here. This map pocket right here, look at there. You could open that up, put your maps, you could put your uh, wallet, uh, personal items, letters from uh, Suzy Q, or whatever, okay? You could put your $68 a month that one infantry man in the first cow told me 1969 1970 said he made $68 a month infantry pay um, for fighting um, during his tours um, the Vietnam War but anyway notice it has that nice rubberized uh, container on the top of the pack to kind of help repel water out of the bottom part okay before we unpack this inside compartment, I want you to look at this. This is basically metal spring wire right here. Not wire, but flat, uh, flat metal, okay? This was simply a metal frame. It had right here, it had this uh, padding here, the little padding here, and the padding right there along the hip. I'm going to try to get these numbers here where you can see them. Hopefully you can read that. It's kind of hard to show the bigger packs here. Okay. Now, notice that this had a little padding on this two-inch uh, shoulder strap here. Now, one of the main important things that was well-liked by the, the soldiers was this right here. Look at that. That's a quick release. Uh crap hits the fan next thing you know boom you drop this thing you just pull that out it's on the ground they put that quick release right here on both sides but that quick release there um uh, it can be a lifesaver that way you can maneuver without your big heavy pack on there because if you've ever looked back at some old pictures you'll see them grunts they loaded down these babies and they carried some gear okay now, uh, let's look at the inside of this thing. Remember me telling you how much gear you could hold in these things? You could hold more than the lightweight rucksack. Uh, the lightweight rucksack was actually uh, produced for the mountain troops, but it found its way in Southeast Asia. Look, here's a fully packed M1962 butt pack. You can put three or four of these fully loaded in this baby. I also have a big old pillow in here. 
But look at the cargo capacity of this pack. Look at the size of that thing. That thing is just humongous. Uh, now, like I said, this is one of my favorite packs in the Vietnam War era. And I wanted to show it to you. Uh, but this pack right here is why there is no Army M1967 butt pack. Okay? The Marine Corps went ahead and made an M1967 nylon butt pack. And there were a few the Army ones made. But with this pack here... They had no reason for the M1967 butt pack because they had this pack. This pack made the M1967 butt pack that they had planned with the M67 gear obsolete because they had this pack right here. Thank you for watching the Web Gear Review.